welcome to Furious Driving and today I'm back in another Volvo. Yes, today I am in a Volvo 850 Saloon. Not the big engine one, the small one that everyone actually bought. Let's go for a ride. And if you like reviews of cars like this, then please do take a moment to stop and hit the subscribe button down below there somewhere. Really do appreciate that. Thank you if you do that. Now on with the review. You know, sometimes it seems barely a week goes by when I'm not pointing at something designed by Jan's wheels guard. And this week is no exception because this is a Volvo 850 designed by Jan's wheels guard. Yes, this is the car that finally killed off the Volvo 700 and 900, finally. And I say that like it's a good thing, but it's not because they were great cars. But this is where evolution finally took us. And we can see how between 1991 and 1996, the Volvo look had evolved into this new shape. And typical of Volvo, evolution rather than revolution is the order of the day. You can see, even though it's a completely new platform with no shared parts and notable for four distinct brand new technologies in the car as well, it's very much still a Volvo. You can see the 700 and the 900 in it. It's very much an all new platform, all new car, all new parts, nothing shared with the old cars, that it is following a lot of the same design traditions. We've got the big impact bumpers at the front. We've even got headlamp wipers still. Oh, fantastic, headlamp wipers are the best. The front wings have the same square angular shape, same swage line even, rising up from a fairly pointy front square end to a bigger point by the A-post. But those square edges have been rounded just a little bit more now. Moving back, we've got these nice smooth safety door handles that won't hurt pedestrians in a crash. And right at the back, this boot line. This looks very much like the 700-900 boot line, which steps up above the window line, giving that big, tall tail height. And then, of course, around the back, more big impact bumpers and very similar wraparound bumpers to the 900 series, which had evolved out of the 700 series. So in a family photo, you can very much see who the parents are of this car. So it's no longer quite as boxy, but it is still good. Now under the bonnet, you'll find one of the other four big things they were talking about in their range of exciting new options in the car. And this is the new engine and its new position. This is part of the modular engine range, which gave us the five cylinder engines. The peak of which was the R series, which uh, gave a 0 to 60 in six and a half seconds, top speed of 158 miles an hour. No wonder the police loved them. This isn't one. This is a two litre 20 valve, which gives us 141 horsepower and 180 four newton meters of torque and a 0 to 60 of 10 and a half seconds top speed about 121. there was actually a slightly less powerful engine same thing but with 10 valves which knocked a little bit more performance off but there's a plethora of other motors in between but the big deal with this thing apart from the extra fifth cylinder which does give that wonderful five cylinder warble is the position of it it's transversely mounted and front wheel drive a big break from the saloons and estates of volvo's past which are always longitudinal and rear wheel drive previously i think we ought to give this a quick brum brum because these do sound so nice. That little kind of off-cam warble, it's very much unique to the five-cylinder petrol and diesel engines. And this engine went on to have quite a long history with Volvo and even went on to spawn the Focus ST five-cylinder engine as well. Now, if you are familiar with Volvos of previous generations, this will all feel very much at home and quite comfortable to you when you climb into this lovely blue velour clad interior. First of all, this door still very much is in the vein of the 700 series. Got the large padded velour area in the door above this recessed door handle. Again, for passenger safety in the event of an impact or an accident, this is nothing you can catch your hand on. It also doubles up as a very sturdy door pull. Got a nice big speaker up here in the top here. Decent sized door bin now, much better than the old 7 and 900 bins and manually tweakable door mirrors. But even the material it's made of still feels very much the same as way back into the 80s. Moving into the main dashboard, again, this all feels very, very traditional Volvo. Nothing's really changed. Everything's just moved on a little bit. It's all very comforting and relaxing and familiar if you're used to this kind of stuff. It has moved on in places. For example, look at the sculpting in this speaker grill. It curves up over the top of this big flat panel here, this big flat area. Epic T shelfery from Volvo just here. The other speaker grill is also quite heftily uh, contoured as well over the shape of that. That's quite exciting stuff over there. Then over on the passenger side, we have a, a veritable cliff face dropping away in front of the passenger. So lots of space there. Huge air vent. Volvo's always strong on their air vent game. And a big glove box. Nicely uh, sized 
felty carpeted and more tea shelf re happening here. So if you're going for a picnic to look at a fjord, you're well equipped to cope with that situation. Moving back to the main dashboard, more air vents, double air vents in the center. Double air vents for the driver as well, so you can have one up at the door, one on your face to keep you warm. So yeah, you're fully, fully ventilated in every possible imaginable scenario. Moving back to the uh, binnacle area, the font is really interesting. Volvo Broad, I think this font is called. It's from their advertising logos. You may have remembered it from the boxy but good. Not actually really a real Volvo advert. That's actually from a film called Crazy People. But here it is. It just gives you that warm, comfortable, reassured feeling of being in a Volvo. We've got a rev counter, speedo, fuel and temperature, beneath which are warning lights all in a nice little cluster on the left and right. And the digital clock is now hidden in the center of here as well. Underneath that, we have got a number of blank panels to remind us we could have sp spent more on this car when it was new, but we do have the control for the electric sunroof, which is above us, and we have the control for the heated rear window and heated mirrors, because this is a car destined to drive in very snowy, chilly climates, so that kind of stuff is important. The stalks are interestingly new, they're huge obelisks of solid plastic. The minor indent, a dimple in the back, so you can just rest your finger in there and just grip it a little easier. Likewise mirrored on the right-hand side for your wipers, and of course your control for all the all-important headlamp washers and the steering wheel. That has changed more than almost anything I think actually in here. It's a, not leather, it's a solid but soft, slightly grippy, rubbery feeling material. Which is good because if you're again wearing gloves in the cold, it's something that's easy to get hold of and it's comfortable in any conditions. We do have a horn on here. The horn sounds far away, parpy but remote. Let's take a quick look. Huge rocker switch for the uh, hazard lights, air mix, so we can choose how we uh, ventilate ourselves yet more. And this is dual zone climate. It's not air conditioned as far as I'm aware, but we do have dual zone for the different passengers to regulate their own choice of temperature. More of the Volvo broad font, such a good looking font, but also in 1980s. And underneath that we have our original Volvo CR708 radio cassette player. You can tell it's a real Volvo, and apart from the word Volvo on it, you've got more of, yet more of the same font on the buttons. It's a tiny version of Volvo broad in bold now. A cubby underneath that because Volvo were offering that choice of many different doubled in, multiple stacking CDs, players, graphic equalizers, all that kind of stuff you could have had if you wanted to go and splurge on your Volvo. It was always an option. Fascinating stuff looking at their brochures from the period. Underneath that we have got our oh, push to expand. I like that. And out it rolls very Thunderbirdsy. I'm going to do that again. That was entertaining. Bit of theatre in the car there. That's your ashtray. And underneath your, your ashtray, a large-ish recess, which is just a tad too small for a phone, and a smaller recess, which is, I don't know, the right size for a fun-sized Mars bar, as far as I can tell. Next to that, you've got your 12-volt socket. And this car comes with an automatic. A manual was up available and the car is a bit brisker with the manual. This is the old school of, of automaticery. And that does have winter economy and sport modes. So, again, <laughs> this is a car from the Arctic Circle, so winter options are always a big deal in this car. Not hidden away under a menu or behind a panel, it's front and centre. Winter button is quite big just there. And likewise, very important, able to use it with gloved hands, your big switches for the heated front seats. Again, an essential in this car. Now this car does come with electric front windows, but not electric rear windows. And one, count them, one electric mirror. That is for your passenger door. Thankfully this is done logically, so it's the one you can't reach has the electric switch. It's amazing how often I've seen this done because I've converted from left to right hand drive and not bothered to change it, that the electric one is on the driver's door and the manual one is over there. This is good. Okay, big um, handbrake, nice armrest. This blue is identical to my 740. It's surprisingly not that deep, this little cubby hole, but it is flock lined, so, and it's got a light in it as well. So things will go in there and not be rattling and they will be illuminated. Before we move into the back, let's take a moment to look at the marvel, I should say, of these footwells. That lovely blue carpet, carrying on to the blue carpet on the door, these blue original factory mats, and then this blue, well it's not actually, it's vinyl, it's not actually leather. Um, I guess it's more hard wearing if you get it wet and things perhaps. Um, and then this beautiful, this is such an early 90s fabric pattern with the the velour with these little squares, then the random colour changes through the fabric. Oh, that's so, so nice and very comfortable as well. Quite surprising the uh, grippy and enthusiastic bolsters just there for a car which is 
very grown up and sensible and also very grown up and sensible these headrests which are part of the Volvo safety system keeping you protected in your 800 series. Now in the back the doors are very much the same as the front. This handle I should say has actually grown quite a lot since the 700 series where it first appeared. It's far more easy to get your fingers into now. Of course this only has manual windows in the back so the kids have to suffer. We've got the same lovely Valuri fabric, lots more of this blue vinyl which I was kind of bringing back a, a muscle memory, a scent memory of when my granddad had a 140 with a blue interior and this looks and feels here in the centre, this big swathe of it, so much like I'm back in that car. We've got seatback pockets on both sides, warning lights down here so if anyone's not got their seatbelt on they will be alerted, everyone will be naming and shaming. Headrests times three in the back, nice big armrest which is lovely and well padded actually, that even opens up. <laughs> a booster cushion which folds out, clicks into place. I'm actually not sure you're allowed to use these anymore. I think there's new legislation which says kids have to be in proper seats, you can't be in these little booster things. But the E39 had this as well. I remember thinking that was quite a clever idea. But that gives you instructions on how to use the seatbelt safely. So if you had a little toddler in there, that'd be lovely. They'd have a great time sitting there. Fantastic view out the front of the car. They'd be loving that. Now we also have hand grips, coat hooks and individual lights on both sides of the interior ceiling. The only thing I'm not loving is because this car has got a sunroof, the ceiling line is actually a little bit low. It's raised up above where you sit exactly, but if you're trying to sit forward, you're very aware that your head is brushing onto the ceiling where the, the sunroof comes back into. Now this is interesting, you've still got the original dealer plates and this broadsword Volvo of catering, which isn't that far from here, it's only just over the Surrey border. Big handle, metal handle no less, up inside there, squeeze that to raise it up. And as I said earlier, these tail lights do kind of echo the style of the 900 series before it. And it's interesting how Volvo really are known more than anything else for estate cars. If anyone says Volvo to you, estate car is still the thing that springs to mind instantly. The saloon, which we have here, is what came to market two years before the estate version of the uh, 800 series. The boot is reasonably big, so it is a pretty good size for a saloon even though it's not an estate car. It goes back a long way, it's fairly wide, you do have this bit of intrusion from the lights but it goes back well into the uh, recess back here and these seats do fold down. And as we go to close it we do have a handle in here but interestingly it's not moulded into the fabric or the plastic of the uh, boot liner, it's a solid metal grip so you can yank that down quite violently if you really want to. Now moving back, something that's worth mentioning on the back parcel shelf are these amazing speakers. You can tell it's the 90s because we've got these great big speaker pods on the rear parcel shelf. These are Volvo HT259s. Volvo did lots of ranges of audio upgrades in their cars back in the 80s and the 90s. So I'd have to check whether this was a st the standard option or if this is one that someone actually tick boxed to go and get. But that's there. One thing that did come as standard though is safety. We have the uh, high level brake light which I believe was first fitted on the 740 in any car in the world as standard from memory and then SIP side impact protection system this is another big deal in terms of safety and one of the four big deals they were making about this car when it was launched this was something new and impressive so Volvo customers Volvo drivers were going to be protected far more in side impacts than any of their rivals that's what they were saying at the time and looking back at this rear window I was going to say look how fine those uh, heater element wires are but you can't because they're so fine you can't see them. And then before we pull away, I'll quickly mention this little cubby hole down on the side of the seat. It's carpeted so it doesn't rattle. It's ideal for I don't know what small things. It's the perfect size for an iPhone to drop into. And it's just a handy little spot which I don't often see in other cars. Also, as you step in you notice there's a great big solid bit of metal at the base of the B post which gives extra protection to the bottom of the seat and to your hip area. So I guess it's all part of SIPs. Let's fire up the Volvo. Oh, five cylinder burble for the win. It is a weird noise, a five cylinder, isn't it? Now, five cylinders really shouldn't work because the number of cylinders shouldn't balance properly, but somehow they do. And they give that amazing rally car thrum that really nothing else comes close to. V8s have the burble, six cylinders have this creamy smoothness, five cylinders just have that, well I'm going to say thrum again because there's not really a better word for it. Now the thing about driving a Volvo is it's remarkably 
relaxing. Anyone can just climb in and you're going to be at peace instantly. It's a serene experience. The ride on this car is a little harder than the previous generations of 7 and 900, so it does feel a little bit more controlled, a bit more like you can go through a corner and the car won't wind up on its roof by mistake. But it is still all about the cruise. This car is currently for sale at Stone Cold Classics at Rutum in Kent. If you like the look of this, please follow the link in the description to their website and take a look at whatever they got in stock. The steering, as before, is super light. And the brakes, if I give them a quick tap, super strong. And being an automatic though, I'm not a huge automatic fan. I'm gonna say it yet again. I don't really like automatics, especially the old school ones. It makes it very easy, just dump it in drive and tootle off. It does take a lot of the interaction and fun out of a car. But if you're going a long way, sitting in traffic, I know, I understand the, the trade-off is there. Now, the development of this car started way, way back in 1978 under a thing called Project Galaxy. And that begat the Volvo 400 series, the M series gearbox, the modular engine, and finally the 800 series over a decade later. And this was very strong on safety yet again. So one of the four big things that we were touting in this car were the self-tensioning seat belts as well as the SIPS side in brack protection system. But as well as that, they'd upgraded the handling quite significantly. It now has something called the Delta Link independent rear suspension, which means the thing rides rather nicely. And that, as well as the R series, rapid cars. Oh, for rapid, should we say that? Um, which popped up. There was also the very, very, very famous thing, which I really remember from the 1990s. There was the BTCC cars, the 850 Touring cars. Wow, those things were so cool. Engineered by Tom Walkinshaw Racing. They just blew everyone's mind. No one was expecting a big family antique dealer's load lugger to go and wipe the floor with, you know, rapid, proper racing cars, but it did. It was the unexpected start of the 1990s touring car seasons. Of course, a lot of the rivals were also front wheel drive at the time as well. The Alpha 155, for example, was a big rival. It was the battle of the boxes. got the gearbox in sport mode so it does hang on a little bit longer in second and third when you boot the accelerator not that much longer it's still quite refined now one unexpected or maybe I should say predictable side effect of this car having a transverse engine rather than a longitudinal engine is increased cabin space Incredibly, with a smaller car on the outside, this actually has slightly more space in the cabin than a Mercedes E-Class. This has got 2.7 cubic meters of space in here apparently, whereas the E-Class of the same year has only got 2.68 cubic meters of space. Who knew? Now the thing about big Volvos like this is that yes, they have got that executive car feel because they're big and they're floaty and comfy and as they got into the 90s, they started to actually handle. But being a Volvo, they have a certain Swedish pragmatism about them that the Germans and the British don't really seem to have because there's always a, a sense of practicality. Yes, it's a big comfortable car, it's a luxury executive car, but it's just got that sense that you can go anywhere in it as well. It's not a thing for special occasions, it's just a very good car you're going to use every day because it's very good. If it snows, no problem, take the Volvo. If it's a day at the beach, no problem, take the Volvo. If you had a Jaguar or an Audi A8 or a BMW 7 Series or something, you might necessarily shy away from those kind of trips because they might get dirty or they're not practical. This though, it has the feeling that pinstripe suit and city one day going to the dump the next. It's a car for all occasions. Now, Volvo really is one of those brands which engenders huge customer loyalty. People stick with their cars for a long time, car after car, and they tend to make the cars last quite a while as well. Well, they used to anyway, before PCP deals were the order of the day. 
because there's something comforting, very warming and nice about a Volvo. It's like you're climbing into a welcoming armchair in a favourite aunt or grandparent's house. Relaxingly addictive being in one of these things. It doesn't really make you want to go and throw the car around the lanes. You just want to drive down them and enjoy the view. I know I went on and on about the noise of the five cylinder at the beginning of this video. As I come to the end of the video, I'm still loving that noise. What a brilliant buzzing sensation, it's fantastic. Right, my fuel lights come on. I think I better take this car back to the dealer before it conks out somewhere. Now this car has an incredible 52,000 miles on it. That is absolutely nothing. And the wear around the car reflects that perfectly because there basically isn't any. That means on average, it has done 1,700 miles a year. I do that in some weeks. I can't believe someone would buy a car, which was pretty expensive back when it was new, and then use it so very, very little. But then when you buy a car like this, and you have all the service records with it, that is half the fun, isn't it? Going back through the old bits of paperwork, finding out where the car lived, who owned it maybe, if you can work out where it was serviced and how many miles they were doing each year. What kind of life did that car live? That's always kind of fascinating and thrilling to find out in a way. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this ride out in this rather wonderful low mileage uh, 850 saloon. If you have, please, as always, hit the like and the subscribe buttons and join me again next time when I'll be driving something completely different.